did you know that God is into every little detail of your life? Do you know that he wants to come in and get all in your business today? So let's let him in today. I'm Amy Schaefer. I am here with Jay Anthony Gilbert. And Jay, we have a great, great program today. We do. Speaking of details, listen, we have a phenomenal guest. His name is Dr. Gene Allen, and he's going to be talking about how to grow your business, how to grow your ministry. He's got a phenomenal book called Taking Care of Business. We're going to be getting into that in his life's journey on how he took just a couple of small businesses and grew them into multi-million dollar corporations. It's going to be outstanding. Oh, I love talking about business and kingdom and church and also also music and worship. And listen, today there's going to be a whole lot of Southern hospitality. Yeah. We have a special a singer, songwriter, Jasmine Brady. She's also a podcaster. I can't wait to dive into, you know, what is she passionate about? What is she singing about? What is God showing her right now? And Jay, they're going to do all of this today with the most beautiful accents. It is going to be great. <laughs> and we're so excited because it's going to be a powerful time. And we're glad that you joined in. So when it comes to making big decisions in both our personal and professional lives, many of us experience anxiety, fear, and confusion. But it doesn't have to be that way, though, especially if we can learn to lean to the one who never fails us. Dr. Gene Allen is our next guest, and he has been a pastor and successful businessman for almost 40 years. And he's now joining us to share how we can apply biblical principles and prosper in both our personal lives as well as our careers. Dr. Gene, welcome to Hope Today. Good to be with you. I'm excited. I am excited too, sir. It's so great to have you with us today. And listen, let's jump right in. You have taken uh, small uh, businesses and turned them into multi-million dollar corporations. What was the journey like taking it from the small business that they were to where you are today? Well, when I started out in 1988, uh, the thing I most remember is the day I said, Lord, uh, I was working for a, a corporation that wanted to start a non-union company. They were a union company. And he said, would you take the reins and start this uh, non-union company? And I said, well, yeah, it was an industrial and marine painting company on the Gulf Coast of uh, the U.S. And the first thing I did when I, I took that company from ground zero is the day I began my journey, I made God my business partner. I said, Lord, I might be the president of the company, but you're going to be the CEO. And the most important advice I could give any entrepreneur or minister starting out is to really partner with God and make him a partner. And I loved uh, what you said a while ago about God wants to be involved in every little detail of our lives. And so I did that and I implemented uh, uh, biblical principles in starting my company. And so uh, when I started my business, uh, it was an amazing journey that I began in 1988. And so I began to bid work in several petrochemical and shipyards. And uh, as I, I bid the work, I began to immediately land some pretty large projects. And uh, some unusual things in 10 minutes, I don't have time to explain. But <clears throat> on a previous trip a year before that I had this journey, I was in Paris, France at a convention. And standing under the, the, the Apple Tower, the bus pulled up at the end of our conference. And my pastor looked at me and said, can you believe it? They're painting the Apple Tower. And they were in the middle of painting the Apple Tower. And the guy gave details about 100 men taking six months. And it was all done by brush and roll. Now, you understand how tall and how big of a structure yeah. that is. And I thought... Brush and roll, that is going to take some time. But my pastor looked at me and said, Gene, the Lord spoke to me and said, one day you were going to be painting projects of this size, some, some big, big things. And so under my breath, I kind of laughed and I said, oh, yeah, sure, right. 
because at the time I was I had done a job over fifty thousand dollars and with a twenty man crew in business. So fast forward a year later, I started this company in eighty eight. And the first job I landed was one of the largest drag lines in the coal mining industry uh, that they made. This drag line had a boom of 338 foot long. It was They said it was on the Discovery Channel, featured on a show. And all of a sudden, when they said the largest drag line in the world, all of a sudden, I remember what my pastor told me a year before. And so with that, I began to grow my company and the most important thing I did was implement Matthew 6.33, where God said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And God said he would take care of all the details and all the things that you need to be successful, not only in your business, but in your life and in your ministry. So Matthew 6.33 became my foundation to kickstart the company. And then Revelation 1 and 6 gave me the vision that I could do ministry and business at the same time because Jesus said, I've called you to be kings and priests. Well, we embrace the priest part of it, ministry, pastors, evangelists, uh, and those things, missionaries. But I noticed very few people are ministry business. So what do kings have well kings have wealth why do we need wealth in the kingdom of god because over the years i found it takes millions and millions of dollars to build churches orphanages drill water wells and build the kingdom of god and fulfill the great commission where jesus said go into where all the world starting in jerusalem judea samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth go and make disciples and so it takes a lot of money to do that. So I began to realize after a short time that God began to bless my company with money just so it wouldn't be that I would be a wealthy man apart from God, but that I could have the funds to help build the kingdom of God. And so over a period of about 40 years, we were able we lost count, but on five continents, we probably helped build 250 or more churches. And uh, we're still giving to missions and doing that work today. And so, but the more we gave, the more I, <clears throat> my business grew. Mm-hmm. And so that took me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 when Paul was raising an offering to go to the Macedonians. He said, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow in abundance, you're going to reap abundance. So the Lord asked me, well, Gene, what do you want to do? I said, well, Lord, I want to sow in abundance. And so he said, well, as you determined in your heart to give, give abundantly. That was verse 4, 2 Corinthians 9. And so as I began to take that journey, my business started out the first year. I did a million and a half with, with 20 men. And year five, I was doing $30 million with 300 men. And at the end of my career, I had probably seven, 800 employees and was working in 26 states, Gulf of Mexico, Saudi Arabia, and Mexico. I went from a little small town company in Southeast Texas all the way to an international company. And as God began to give me money, he opened up all the doors for me to give to uh, supply Bibles and send missionaries and and do all the work that God wanted me to do. Wow, that's amazing, Dr. Allen. Uh, you know, one of the things I have a question, we've got about two minutes left. Uh, I want to ask you this. Um, you kind of gave us the end result, you know, how God blessed the business and about you sowing. How did you practically partner with God? Okay, how did I practically partner with God? Yeah, how did your Uh, business, what did God give? I mean, because you're giving us the spiritual side, but what did God give you? How did your business take off? What was it about mixing God with your business and the business plan or whatever that he gave to you? How did that thing just take off? 
Well, first of all, I had I had a dream. You know, uh, until you know, a dream is only a dream until you write down goals and and you on paper uh, have a business plan. But what I did is I found some of the best people as project managers, uh, marketing, sales, and I began to pray that God would send me all those people. And so the power of synergy is pretty awesome and collaboration. So I surrounded myself with a successful team. That's how I got started. And we do that by asking the Holy Spirit. He said, you know, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and he will what? Lead and guide you yes. into all the details you see that we have. But we have to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, my sheep, what? Know my voice. So I began to pray and God began to send me a successful team. And then God also, he said, acknowledge me in all your ways and I'll direct your paths. So I was able to tell my sales force and marketing and pursue uh, and have the wisdom of God. You know, he said, if any man act like wisdom, ask of God in James chapter one. And God began to give me wisdom to direct my staff to where to target. And so that's why my company became successful. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gene, for just what you've been doing. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to get a hold of his book, Taking Care of Business, to find out more about how you can partner with God. And as you can see from his testimony, there's so many great things that God has done for him, and he allowed him to become a financier of the gospel. Dr. Gene, thank you so much for your time and hanging out with us here on Hope Today. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Appreciate you. Well, when we come back, we'll be joined by singer and songwriter Jasmine Brady, and she's going to be sharing about her new music and how she's using her gifts and talents to glorify the Lord. Stick around. We'll be right back. The barriers that stand between you and a blessed life may feel insurmountable, but Dr. Robert Jeffers assures you they can be overcome. This month, when you give your most generous gift to Cornerstone Television, we'll send you Dr. Jeffers' new book, Invincible, Conquering the Mountains that Separate You from the Blessed Life. Offering biblical insight and practical tools, he explains how you can conquer the hindrances of doubt, guilt, anxiety, discouragement, fear, and bitterness through prayer and faith in a God whose strength can move mountains. Request your copy when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television. Your generosity will evangelize the lost, encourage believers, provide excellent Bible teaching, and so much more. Call us today and become invincible, conquering the mountains that separate you from the blessed life. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. Our next guest is a talented singer and songwriter who was born into a music legacy, which includes her mother, Candy Hempfield Christmas. Jasmine Brady also serves as worship pastor for Regeneration Nashville. She joins us now to share about her music and how she's using her talents to tell others about the good news of Jesus. Jasmine, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much for having me, it's an honor. Talk about a legacy of music. I, I need you to unpack that because I myself sat in my home church in Oklahoma City as your great aunt and uncle, the Howard and Vestal Goodman, sang yes. in our church year after year my whole life. You know, it's been such a blessing. So my my great aunt and uncle are Howard and Vestal Goodman of the Happy Goodman family. And then my grandparents are Joel and Labriska Hemphill of the Singing Hemphills. And they wrote songs like He's Still Working On Me. And then my mother started singing with them when she was 13 and went on to sing with the Gaithers at the height of Gaither Homecoming when they were packing out like 20,000 seat arenas. So as a child, I would go and hear her sing at these big arenas. And I thought everyone 
did that. I, I thought it was just normal. All the kids went and saw all the parents, you know. But God has been so good to me uh, to give me giftings in music as well. And then to put me in a family that could encourage me in the faith, encourage me in my gifts and talents, and then um, help me to forward the gospel of Jesus Christ as they've done. So it's been a real blessing. Uh, do you live with any pressure because of that music legacy? Not at all. My, my family's not like that. They, um, they are so kind and full of the love of the Lord. And um, my family does a lot of different things. I have uncles that have been very successful in business. We have a lot of pastors, preachers, teachers. And so, um, you know, if we were musical, great. And if not, great. They just have always been encouraging. And I think that that's part of um, just my success, even what little I have, is just the encouragement and the kindness of my family to, you know, help me learn to craft the gifts that God has given me. I love that so much. May we all be families like that. So let's talk about what you're doing now. You're a worship pastor at Regeneration Nashville. What is that? Is that a church? And, and tell us what you're doing. Yes. So my dad, I think that you had him on as a guest recently, Pastor Kent Christmas, and he and my mom, uh, Candy Christmas, they passed their Regeneration Nashville, which is a church here in Nashville. And um, I started leading worship for them when I was 19 years old, and I'm about to be 36. I was hearing Dr. Gene talk about starting his business in 1988, and that's the year that I was born. Uh, so I thought that was cute. But um, I lead worship for them every week. My husband and I, we've been married 15 years. We have a 12-year-old son, an 8-year-old daughter, and a 2-year-old daughter. I also just released a new record called Lover of My Soul. And then I have a podcast called Holy Holy. It's W-H-O-L-L-Y, like whole, being holy, holy, where we talk about the Lord and talk about scripture. So life is busy, but life is good. Wow, I can bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan. Listen, <laughs> um, I love that. The, the 88 was a good year and the Southern hospitality is coming on strong today. So let's talk about your passion for this Lover of My Soul music project. Did you write all the songs? Like where did it come from? Where, where did the messaging and the heart of this project come from? Absolutely. I, I wrote all of the songs and I co-wrote one song with a great friend, Jimmy Yeary, who wrote songs like um, I Call Mama from um, Tim McGraw and I Drive Your Truck. So Jimmy's a great friend and he co-wrote Thank You, Lord, with me. Mm -hmm. But um, some of the songs I wrote when I was a teenager, the Bible says that a wise man pulls out of his treasure the old and the new. So when the Asbury revival came about and we were all watching it on the news, one of the things that struck me about the revival was that there was no one to run screens in the middle of the night. And these, these college kids were just having to sing songs that they knew by heart. And I felt like the Lord began to impress on me the power of simple worship songs, where we can lift our hands and close our eyes and connect to the Lord without having to worry about the words. So I wrote the song, Lover of My Soul. And uh, the climax of the song says, nobody loves me like Jesus. And part of the message of this album is to remind us that no one loves us like Jesus, that he is for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Another one of the main themes of this record is victory. We have to remember that we are victorious through Jesus Christ, who has already won the, ba the battle for us at Calvary. And um, 2 Chronicles 20 talks about music changing the atmosphere. So I'm hoping that listeners, that they will um, turn this music on and remind themselves of the greatness and the power of the God that we serve, that worship will change the atmosphere, and they'll re be reminded of the love of Jesus. Oh, I love hearing the background of this album. And I just want you to know that you are a preacher. You are yeah. flat out <laughs> preaching right now. Uh, Kent and Candy better be careful. You are right on their <laughs> heels. And oh, I want to talk funny. about your, your podcast and really your passion for Bible reading. Can you share that with us? Absolutely. When, um, when I was a brand new mom, I was 23. I had a six month old with colic, which means he just cried all the time. Yeah. We lived in a one room, um, a little apartment. And the Lord called me to read my Bible through that year. 
And um, I pushed through all of the obstacles and I did it. I was so proud. But that was really life changing to me to give just a small yes to the Lord. This is my 13th year reading the Old Testament once and the New Testament twice. And um, it's led me to get a, a Master's of Divinity. I'm in the middle of pursuing that as well. And so this year, I invited listeners to read through the scripture with me. And then once a week on Monday mornings, we release a 10-minute podcast to recap the reading. Because I believe in the infallibility, the inerrancy of scripture. Scripture is the absolute truth that our culture and society needs today. And if we will bring back biblical literacy, I believe it will change the family, the church, and ultimately the nation. All right, Jasmine for president, <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, what is God showing you right now in this season? Right now in this season, I think that the Lord is really impressing on me both the individual and the corporate relationship. I think that we focused a lot on our individual individuality with the Lord and we've lost focus of our corporate family, the church family, that we're a part of what God is doing corporately, that we need to hold hands with our brothers and sisters, bear one another's burdens, sing together, pray together, but then also remember our personal responsibility to the Lord, that we'll stand before him alone. Um, and, and he'll ask us, have we been stewards of what he's given us individually? So we live in this tandem, um, this tandem pursuit of the individual and the corporate. And I think that the way ultimately to balance that is through worship and the word, John chapter four, the spirit and the truth, that we're pursuing God through the truth of his word, but we're also pursuing him through a right spirit. David said, creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, so that our spirit is right before the Lord, constantly pursuing him in all that we do in holiness and love of the savior. Woo, in word and in truth, man, that is yes. so powerful. Can you do me, we have, we have one minute. Can you pray okay. for somebody that wants to receive Christ right now? Yes. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, we send the Holy Spirit out to everyone that's listening right now. And God, we ask that you would begin to move in their hearts. Lord, break down every barrier that has stood between you, God, and this precious saints. And Father, I pray that the love of Jesus, God, would begin to invade their homes, to invade their hearts. Lord, that the anointing that breaks every yoke would break every bondage of sin. God, the bondage of, of shame. And Lord, the things that the enemy has held, God, in their minds. Lord, I pray that the salvation of Jesus wrought for us at Calvary, Lord, would wash away every sin and bring them to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for your love and your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Jasmine. And we're so thank excited. Thank you so much. Because we're going to conclude today's program with a little Christmas in July. Here's Jasmine Brady singing with her mom a Christmas song, Speak the Name of Jesus. Atmosphere is changing. Nothing stays the same. Heaven is waiting for the mention of the name. Spirit is moving, burning like a flame. Healing the broken by the one we proclaim. Raise it up. Fill the skies, chains will fall, mountains move, we lift him high. Speak the name, the name above all other names. Speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down, fill the of shame, miracles unfolded at the mention of your name, our darkness is fleeing, mercy is raining down, healing waters flowing as our lips make the sound, raise it up. Change. 
Mountains will fall, mountains move. We lift him high. We lift him high. Speak the name, the name above all other names. Speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down. Fill the earth with the sound of the name, the name of Jesus. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover true strength that only comes from God. Author Lindsay Roberts reveals how to exchange strength-stealing situations and relationships for those that will help us to grow in the hands of a loving God instead. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.